Governor Pritzker is officially seeking a second term in office. The governor launched his re-election campaign yesterday with a video on social media touting his leadership of the state through the COVID-19 pandemic. But Republican opponent, opponents use the occasion to bash what they have called a disastrous tenure. Paris Schutz sat down for a one-on-one -on -one with the governor this afternoon. Paris, what did he have to say? Well, Brandis, the governor is all in, and this is after months of appearing to consternate publicly about whether he wanted to seek a second term, especially since some of the scrutiny that his family and his children took from some of his opponents during the COVID-19 pandemic. But he says his family is all on board with this, too. And yesterday's rollout video, uh, as we saw, was 100 percent about his response to COVID-19, getting the state through the mitigations and the relatively successful vaccination program. I asked the governor if this is why he believes voters should give him a second term. He said no. He says it's what he believes his administration accomplished despite COVID-19. But we made great strides nonetheless. Think about raising the minimum wage. Think about that. There are people, a million people will be lifted out of poverty as a result of our minimum wage hike. Uh, we expanded health care for people across the state. We've uh, put people to work building roads and bridges and schools. We've been getting our fiscal house in order. And we've been making government work for Illinois families. And and the governor's opponents on the Republican side have criticized his COVID response, shutdowns, uh, problems with uh, unemployment security, deaths at the LaSalle Veterans Home. So no doubt they'll bring that up during the campaign. So Paris, what is he proposing for his second term? Well, he is sounding the same notes that President Biden and National Democrats are sounding right now. Things like expanded child care, universal pre-K and free college tuition. Early childhood education and child care in our state needs to be expanded. And we've seen that during the pandemic, that that is one of the biggest challenges. We want to get our people to work, we, to back to work, right? We've got to make sure that we're providing child care for everyone. Expanding MAP grants, as I have steadily every single year, to make sure that we're doing the right thing for our young people and for their families to make sure they can afford it. But I think everybody that's certainly at the median income level and below in our state ought to be able to go to college for free. The question is how to pay for that, especially in a state that has a backlog of bills, although this administration has brought that backlog down. I asked Pritzker if he would again push for a graduated income tax that failed last time at the ballot box, because surely there would need to be more revenue to pay for these initiatives and the state's massive pension costs. Because I've been all about lowering taxes for the middle class and those who are in the working class and asking the wealthiest to pay a little bit more. And while we didn't, weren't able to do that with the fair tax, uh, as you know, we cut corporate welfare by $655 million in this last budget. Um, that does a significant amount to reduce the uh, structural deficit that we have in our state and allows us to move some of that uh, to paying for people to go to college to make sure that we're expanding child care and early childhood education. And Paris, remind us who the governor is facing in this upcoming election. Well, as you recall, the governor dumped a staggering $35 million of his personal wealth into the reelection campaign. There are three Republican candidates who no doubt are not going to spend that much collectively who have filed to run. They are downstate State Senator Darren Bailey, who took the governor to court over COVID restrictions, Chicago suburban businessman Gary Rabin, and former State Senator Paul Schimpf. All three today said they felt the governor's handling of COVID and the resultant economic fallout has not been good. What I know is the economy of Illinois is sits in shambles. You know, we've got several state agencies to this date that still have not uh, returned to work. Uh, we have small business suffering all across this state because he allows people to sit and continue uh, to draw unemployment benefits when, when uh, you know, there, there's lots of opportunity for jobs. And meanwhile, Rabin issued a statement saying, quote, Governor Pritzker has raised taxes, increased spending and signed into law some of the most radical far left legislation in the nation. When Pritzker didn't get his income tax increased, he raised taxes and regulations at a record pace to dominate the high tax citizens in America. And then uh, a statement from candidate Schimpf who says, quote, under the Pritzker leadership deficit, as he calls it, he has failed to stand up to corruption, failed to protect our veterans and families, and failed to help overtaxed Illinoisans. In three years, J.B. Pritzker has demonstrated he neither has a vision or the leadership to unite our state. Now, the governor has had a harsh response to his critics, saying that he took decisive action when his critics did nothing. 
the folks who say those things are the very same folks who did nothing to mitigate the pandemic. These are the folks who voted against the supports for families, like expanding housing support, like expanding small business support across the state during the pandemic. We've had challenges, there's no doubt about it, uh, during this pandemic, but every day I wake up and think about how do I make people's lives better. This is going to be a long race. It's a marathon. The primary is not till June. General election next November. So sit back and, and let it all happen. And we have the full interview uh, with Governor Pritzker on our website. Okay, Paris, thanks so much. And of course, you know, in just a minute, we'll see you again um, because you've got more with Illinois members of Congress on the infrastructure battle and more. You got it. All right, Paris, thanks.